Hey, welcome to Gadgets and Gizmos, the show where textile meets lifestyle. We're here to provide you with informative tech tips and popular product picks. I'm your host, Mark Saltzman, and today I'm joined by my co-host, the reigning princess of tech, Amber <laughs> MacArthur. Hey, Amber, what are you uh, showing us later in the show today? Um, what I'm going to show, uh, we're going to actually take a look at toothbrushes today, mm. and if your toothbrush looks a little bit like this, which is kind of beat up. A little well, weathered, yeah. Yeah, definitely a little weathered, and you want some different options so you don't have to mm -hmm. replace it every three or four weeks like I have to do. We're going to show you some high-tech toothbrushes. We're going to go from low end to high end um, to see what options are out there to you know, make sure that you get a brighter and whiter smile. So lots <laughs> of right. fun gadgets. And we expect nothing but the tooth from you. Exactly, Mark. That's <laughs> <laughs> all right. I couldn't resist, Amber. <laughs> but before that, uh, we've got a sneak peek at a product for all the aspiring golf pros out there. Why use a mouse and keyboard to play your favorite computer golf game when you can swing a real club, hit a real ball, and feel that all-important thwack? Well, it is now possible with the Canadian product called the Golf Launch Pad. It's basically a PC peripheral that plugs plugs into your computer's USB port and lets you take a swing at playing Tiger Woods golf games. All right, I'm here to give a probably a really poor demo, Amber, <laughs> of how this thing works. I am not a golfer. I, You're not? I'm compelled to tell you that first, but uh, this product really is a lot of fun, and it sure beats using a mouse and keyboard. All you do is plug this into a USB port, like I was saying. There's no software installation or anything. Mm -hmm. Comes with Tiger Woods PGA Tour 2004, and as you can see, it's got a golf ball tethered on a little rope here, so it's not going anywhere. It's got a little T, and you put that in the middle, and what you see around it are about eight or nine different optical sensors, and this measures three things. It measures the power. The, uh, power of your shot, the angle, and of course the direction. So what I mean by angle is if you need to lift the ball up in order to get okay. some distance in the game. Really cool stuff. So uh, I'm right-handed, so what you do is you simply put your club over the right sensor. It tells the golf launch pad what direction you're hitting it from. As you can see, there's a little light there. It went from red to amber to green. It's now telling me to go. Mm -hmm. So if you see in the game now, Tiger is there at the tee. He's not going to move until uh, you take your swing. So here we go. Got to find some nice right. open area here. Good luck. And, uh, thank you. <laughs> All right. A little nervous here and I take my swing Oh, All right, at least I didn't miss the ball. And you heard that thwack. Yeah. And if you're a golfer, you really want to feel that. And as you can see, in the game, what you do on the, on the launch pad actually happens in the game, about three seconds afterwards. Okay, so there's a little, little bit of a delay. A little delay. So let's do it again. Again, we're going to just take that uh, tee and we uh, unwrap it from the uh, tethered golf ball, put it in the middle. And uh, if, you're take, if you're putting, by the way, you've got to put the uh, club in the middle sensor. But let's take another swing here okay. as we're still far away from the hole. It's flashing red telling you to just wait a moment. All right. So here we go. I'm just going to take my swing anyways. I'm not sure if it's ready for me. But that's just the way it goes. There we nice. go. Again, I'm not getting any height here. I can tell by looking at the background. Yeah, <laughs> no, actually, no hole in one. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It actually, it's telling me I wasn't ready yet, probably because the, uh, the uh, tee was still tethered around the club, I, you know, just for the purposes of time. I'm not yeah. going to untangle it, but you get the idea. Yeah. It's really intuitive. I mean, you don't have to be you know, a technophile to learn how to use this thing. Exactly. Mm. So how do you think it would help, actually, someone with their golf game? Yeah, well, I think because it feels more like a real golf game, it'll, it'll probably appeal to a real golfer more than it will teach okay. a newbie. Plus, you need a club. It doesn't come with a club. Okay. Right, so I think that for those who do play golf, and I have a, fr a few friends that are true mm -hmm. golf aficionados, they, they love this thing. And they came over and they, they tried it out and they said it's really authentic. It's awesome. not the first one that does it, but it's, uh, it's, the golf launch pad is actually the most robust one, it's solid metal, it's got that mesh, uh, mesh one, in it, and it's really realistic. They said what they do in the game, awesome. uh, what they do on the board shows in the game. Yeah, really neat cool. stuff. So, well, good luck. Thanks. Keep practicing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully next time we see it, I'll be a little bit better. It's $2.99, by the way. You can go okay. to electricspin.com to learn more about it. Okay. All right. So coming up next, we'll take a look at the latest handheld portable gaming system from Sony. We'll tell you whether or not the PSP is hot or not right after this commercial break. So stick with us. Welcome back to Gadgets and Gizmos. As we all know, Nintendo's handheld monopoly in the portable gaming world is now officially challenged by their longtime console competitor. Sony has launched its PlayStation Portable, or PSP, in the early spring. And if sales are any indication, Mario better collect as many coins as he can. The PSP plays high-end 3D games on a stunning 4.3-inch widescreen display. And it can also play music, full-length movies, digital photos, and video clips.
All right, you know, we're looking here at the PSP. Yeah. Amber, I know you're, you've uh, had your uh, playing time with this I've as had well. A, yeah, and I was at the launch, so I've checked it out a little bit, but yeah. uh, you, you seem to be more of an expert. So. Well, you know, I mean, I, I review a lot of video games, mm -hmm. absolutely, and this is a great looking machine. Let's, before we talk about the graphics itself, Amazing style, amazing design, yeah. and from a female perspective, it's pretty it's, slick, isn't it? It, it is pretty mm. slick, actually, and it's, it fits really, really well in your hands. You can kind of just mm -hmm. pick it up, and it's not that heavy, which is nice as well. So Yeah, it's yeah. kind of like the Game Boy for adults, if you yeah. will. It's a little bit, you know, targeting to an older demo. Uh, I still think primarily male, but, you know, because it's gaming. Yeah, but it does definitely. a lot of those other extra things that maybe, you know, chicks will dig it, too. Yeah. I think so. Now, let's first talk about the graphics. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely stunning. I mean, we've never really seen graphics like this on a handheld system before. It's true 3D. Um, I'd say close to, you know, PlayStation 2-like quality graphics. Yep. And I think that we've got, uh, I can play some games here oh, and perfect. just show yeah, what it looks like. It this is uh, Need for Speed Underground Rivals from Electronic Arts. Okay. And look at, look at, this is just unbelievable. Holding this down here, I'm just uh, racing this game here. I'm trying to do it a little backwards, so don't judge me on my race. So first bad golf <laughs> and job. now bad racing, right? <laughs> look at this. Uh, you can tell I'm not the, the sports nut that uh, I may look like. No, but uh, all kidding aside, this is just amazing for a handheld device. And I think this is the first thing that people talk about when they see the PSP. It's the screen. Yeah, this is amazing. It yeah. actually looks very, very cool. Absolutely amazing. Um, games are also wireless, so that means you can, I'm just going to pause it here, mm -hmm. that means you can also play with other PSP owners in the mm -hmm. same room or on the net. It's got Wi-Fi support, so as long as you're in a hot spot, um, if you, for example, were in another part yep. of Canada or in the U.S., I can uh, log online, play against you in the same game, very if cool. the game supports it. So mm -hmm. if you're, you're sitting there with someone and they have a PSP, you can sit on the subway and kind of play against them. Yeah, absolutely. That's very the idea. Cool. And I know the Nintendo DS offers mm -hmm. that as well with their local play and they're going to unveil Wi-Fi by the end of, uh, end of the year. But, uh, yeah, this, I mean, it, it just really does gaming really well. And, wow, talk about launch titles, 24 titles. Pre oh, it's wow. unprecedented. That's a lot. Yeah, that's more. I think that's more. I, I, I'd venture to say that that is the largest software launch for any video game platform mm -hmm. ever. And let's face it, Sony's been dominating on the home front for the last two you know, console wars, the last two generations of console wars, no surprise that they have the industry support for this Definitely. kind of thing. Yeah. And what about music? Is it yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It plays your MP3s. I, I hesitate to say it was an iPod replacement. Yeah. You have to buy a memory card that stores, you know, some music so it's not like a hard drive or anything like that. Also, they don't make it that easy to get them on the system oh. itself. You don't get a USB cord. Okay. Uh, so you have to pick one up, oh, about 10 bucks or so. Connect it to your PC, you mm -hmm. format your memory card, and then you drag and drop your songs over. Um, I could show you how to do that, but it's pretty okay, basic. So it's MP3. MP3s, okay. yeah. Uh, I think it may support some other file formats as well. And there'll be certainly software upgrades. Um, and same with photos. Same idea is that you've got your, your pictures on your computer, your hard drive taken from maybe your digital camera. Drag and drop them over. Yep. And then you can start a slideshow. So now you can watch, you know, take a look at your photos, listening to your favorite MP3 at the same time. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we've got a graphic here, the pros and cons. Mm -hmm. Definitely, the, you know, the graphics are, you know, uh, definitely a pro here. Uh, great looking machine. It does everything well in terms of media. It's not like a computer replacement or a PDA. Yeah. Yeah, so it's not a browser. No, not a browser, but uh, great stuff and, uh, you know, overall a great little machine. Some cons, though, you know, the discs that you buy for the movies and the games, they look like this, by the way. Uh, this is called the UMD, Universal Media Disc. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the, sort of the source of all three beefs I have with it. One is that it eats up battery life because it's a spinning media. Oh, Take a look at yeah, the disc. Definitely. It looks like a mini DVD, if you will. Yep. So we're talking about five hours for a game or about two and a half to three hours for a movie. So that's only a, about a third of what the Nintendo DS can do. Um, also, it can also uh, cause load times. So mm -hmm. when you're playing a game and you're in between levels, it can uh, cause some load times, which you know could be 30 seconds to a minute. But the payoff is just amazing once it's good. there. And what about there's some uh, dead pixel issue as well with the screen. I've someone mm -hmm. posted something on my blog. What's that all about? Yeah, so the screen, as attractive as it is, some of them have what we call dead pixels. A couple little dots on there that don't, do not show any color or light. They're there for good. Sony says they'll replace it oh, if there's great. any problem. But overall, Two thumbs up for the awesome. PSP. Yeah, it's beautiful. Retails for two ninety nine. You go to PlayStation.com to learn more about that, Amber. So stay tuned. After the break, we'll see what our field reporter, Pei, is sneaking around town with. Why she have a te uh, trench coat and some tiny tech toys, we will find out. That's up next when Gadgets and, Game and Gizmos returns. Today we're going to tag along with our field reporter, Pei, as she visits a spy store. Check out the types of gadgets you may want to use if you are looking to spy on someone. So the next time you're thinking to yourself, hey, is that a lipstick in your pocket or are you just happy to see me? You might want to think twice. It could be a microphone. Let's check out what other sneaky spy tech she's found. 
If you've ever suspected someone of being dishonest or of cheating on you, then I've got just what you need. All you need is some basic spy technology. I'm with Ursula Lavana, who is the owner of Spy Tech. You were the first spy equipment store in Canada, right? That's right. 1991. Exactly. What made you start a spy equipment store? Well, there was a big need uh, for business people to find out who's stealing from their business. And also many mothers that were working wanted to find out what's going on at home with a babysitter, if everything was okay. And then, of course, there was a big problem with cheating spouses, and still is. <laughs> that will never yes. end, will it? <laughs> <laughs> and we started, of course, to monitor spouses also. Now, do you ever get people who come in here who've never spied on anyone before and say they are suspicious of a cheating partner? Do they ask you for advice? Like, how do I go about it? What makes for a good spy so I don't get caught? All the time. Yes, all the time. And what do you tell yes. them? Well, we do point them towards the cameras first. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, of course, uh, if nothing happens at home, you know, everything is fine, they do need to hire an investigator to find out what's going on. So Ursula, if someone was suspicious of their spouse perhaps cheating on them, their spouse, their partner, what would we put together for a great sort of catch your cheating spouse kit? Well, I would start off with a digital camera, of course. Okay. So you can take a discreet picture in the bar where the cheating spouse is sitting with his new discovery. <laughs> and <laughs> new discovery. And you're just writing notes. Poetry. Yes. If you want to record the promises that your cheating spouse is making to you, you have a hidden microphone here which is in a lipstick wired into a digital voice recorder. Oh. So you can discreetly record all the conversations you have to later on proof what he said was true or not true. Oh, that's right. And this is, everybody, every woman would have this in her purse anyway. Then from there, we're going to go to cameras, right? Yeah, we have, of course, the mini cameras. and This is the world's hide. smallest? That is the world's smallest video camera right now. Look how tiny. And of course you can hide those anywhere in your house and wire them into a VCR. And then you can record on your VCR what's going on when you're not there. Oh, okay, great. We also do have the little wireless model. Now this one you don't have to run a cable from the camera into a VCR. You just connect a battery onto here and it will transmit 300 feet to a receiver. So here's the tiny little camera, the wireless. I'm going to take it for a little stroll, see what I can get. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. I'm a spy, I have my spy camera, no one can tell, cause it's small and it's discreet, and I'm gonna spy on people, and they're gonna spy on this guy right here. That's okay, go by, I'm a spy. If I wanted to catch my cheating spouse without him knowing it was me calling on the phone, you have a voice changer. Yeah, we have the portable voice changer that works on any telephone, mm -hmm. home phones, uh, cell phones. So you cover up the speaker microphone with this and speak into this unit here. And then it changes your voice from man to woman, woman to man. Oh, I could be a man. I could be a man. Hello. Do I sound like a man? Oh, yes. I do sound like a man? Oh That's God. always been my dream. So this is the voice changer and I'm going to call my boss, my producer at work. Hello, Sonia. I'm your secret admirer. I think you're hot. I can see you right now because I have a secret little spy camera with you. You are. And I love that host pay that you work with on that show. She is so fun. She is so fantastic. This is a voice stress analyzer. So if you feel he's not quite telling you the truth or you want to find out if he's under stress, of course, you can use a voice stress analyzer. It measures the micro tremors in your voice. So as long as you speak normal, there are lots of micro tremors. So you see this unit moving up and down, up and down. But when you're under stress, there are no micro tremors. So it will stay in the red part a lot longer and more often. This is a semen detection kit, mm -hmm. so if you're suspicious there's some hanky-panky going on, <laughs> <laughs> you can, of course, take a test of uh, fabrics, you know, like uh, bed sheets, car seats, and places like this, and it will tell you within 15 seconds if there's semen present. And if we wanted to put all of this, all of our catch our cheating spouse stuff into one place where, well, our spouse wouldn't find it, 
then you've got this great suitcase here. Well, we have a uh, um, security briefcase here, uh, which is mainly used by people to carry important documents or jewelry, you know, other very valuable uh, products. Uh, it is, um, has an alarm built in, mm -hmm. and if somebody should grab the briefcase away from you, you can press your remote and the alarm will go off. Okay. Now, if they don't drop the briefcase, within 15 seconds again, it, an electric shock will come out of the handle, and they will drop the briefcase. Thank you, Ursula. I'm going to take all of the stuff, and I'm going to put it all to the test and see what I can find out. All of my Catch My Cheating Partner kit. Remote control, very important. Thank you, Ursula. Thank you. I'll let you know how I do. Good. Okay. So, at Spy Tech, you can find spy products in all of price ranges to satisfy the inner spy in all of us. Now that I've got my suitcase full of products to catch that cheating spouse, oh yeah, I'm ready to go first. I can't be recognized. That's a sign of a good spy. Well, thanks, Pei. Well, that's some creepy stuff. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's a little bit creepy, but I'm Would you? I, I want to know if you'd ever try one of those things. You know what? I think that I could use some of it maybe to spy on my roommates to see if they're stealing some of my food <laughs> <laughs> and my clothes, maybe. Yeah. I don't know, that would be perfect. Me, scares me off the dating scene, too. As yeah, well, so, yeah. I think I'm done with dating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Great story, though. Huh? It's really Anyways, good. Thanks. Well, I hope that story satisfied your suspicions. Uh, so while you're chowing down on some chips and other snacks during this break, we'll be brushing up on the latest tooth tech so you can find out what products will make your pearly white sparkle when Gadgets and Gizmos returns after a short break. Your toothbrush looks like it's gone through oral combat every three or four weeks, you might want to listen up. There are some high-tech options on your drugstore shelves that will make your smile brighter and whiter. And Amber's here today to shed some light on tech for your teeth. All right. So... Hey, Amber, so tell me the tooth about this technology. No, 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 all kidding aside, this isn't new stuff, but we're, you know, we've been seeing an evolution in electric toothbrushes. Is that what we're looking at? Yeah, definitely. I was kind of inspired to do this because I was reading on one of the gadget blogs about this new toothbrush that they're coming out with, I think in the fall, that um, actually plays audio, but you're the only one who can hear oh, it inside awesome. your mouth. So mm -hmm. you're brushing your teeth, so it kind of has, you have incentive to actually brush your teeth <laughs> listening to music. So yeah. anyway, so I started to look around and uh, came up with three options as far as high-tech toothbrushes. Okay, so that one's not the market that yet, one's not on the market others. yet. Yeah, there's three others. So mm -hmm. the first one that we're going to show is actually the Colgate Microsonic, um, and this Microsonic. is Microsonic. I, I know, like great name. And uh, this runs on a triple A battery. So and it only costs five dollars, which is pretty. Oh, that's an electric toothbrush. Yeah, oh, it yeah. Doesn't so look it, like it. it vibrates. So we're going to do a little test here. And Mark, if you don't mind helping me, you can. Oh, make that am I the applier? Yeah. The, okay, here we go. Toothpaste applicator. Toothpaste applicator. applicator. There yep. we go. We're going to put in. Very nice. And this has scope, by the way, scope protection. Are we allowed to say the sponsor? <laughs> Sure. All right. And we'll dip it in the water here. And then we've called this little chatty Kathy down here. <laughs> We're going <laughs> to turn it on and see. Well, so you can I see. Can hear that. Yeah. So I've actually um, tested out this particular toothbrush. And what I've found is that it, the handle actually vibrates more than the brush vibrates on the end. So, you know, it's a good brush, I think, if you have kids, teenage kids or something like that, and you mm -hmm. want them to have fun brushing their teeth, this is a really, really and good brush. And the price option. is right, five bucks. Five bucks. Um, but it doesn't have a replaceable head, and there's a few other things that ah, are not that great. So it's, it's disposable. It's disposable. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of a, you know, it's a kind of fun way to encourage kids to brush their yeah, teeth a lot. anything helps. Exactly. All so right. the second one we're going to look at is by Waterpick, which is a pretty popular company. Mm -hmm. um, and this is the Waterpick toothbrush. It's around $60. Okay. Um, and it's a rechargeable toothbrush. Um, and it lasts for up to two weeks with one charge. Um, and so I've tried this as well. And this is a pretty good toothbrush. Um, the vibrating head isn't, doesn't vibrate too quickly. And it's very, very quiet, which, which is nice if you have roommates. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and we're going to test it out again. All right. So mm -hmm. we'll put on some toothpaste. Excellent. And uh, dip it in. And as you can see here, it's a, got a very small head on it. And it's really quiet. You yeah. can barely even hear, I can't it. hear it. Yeah, you can't hear it at all. 
And but the idea is that this is going to give you a better job than you doing it yourself, Exactly. Right? So, you know, a lot of dentists, they actually recommend that you get an electric oh, toothbrush. Yeah? Okay. Um, so you don't just use your regular toothbrush because with rotation, you get better cleaning than you do with just mm -hmm. your regular brushing. So um, this is pretty good. What The only thing I didn't like about this particular one, the water pick one, is I found like it, was, it didn't seem to penetrate a lot, so there's not a lot of rotation in the bristles, so it wasn't right. that strong. It doesn't rotate at all, the bristles. No, no, okay. they just go back and forth, actually, right. so there's no rotation. But I it's, like the little holder here yeah, for alternate heads exactly. or for family so, members? Yeah, for family members. So this one's $60, which okay. is a pretty decent price as far as um, electric toothbrushes go. And a middle-of-the-road sort of model. Middle-of-the-road model, so that's uh, the good option. But we have mm -hmm. sort of the mother of all electric toothbrushes uh, yeah. here, which is the uh, Braun Oral-B. Um, this is the Series 8000. <laughs> I know, I can't <laughs> right right call it this. <laughs> the you know it's going to be good. 8000. Mm -hmm. um, so this is kind of a fun toothbrush, and again, this lasts for two weeks on one charge. All right. um, and it co comes with all these different uh, parts for the head as well. So we're going to test this out, and you can, you know, you'll be able to hear this once you apply okay. the. Thank you. You're the, good at uh, this, Mark. Thank you. Lots of practice. Yeah, and so you can see, it, you know, this is the, all the heads are rotating. It's making kind of. A <laughs> now I have a question. What if the uh, teeth are chatting while you're oh, brushing? Oh yeah, see, that's, that, would that that's be a, a little idea. messier? Do will they chat? Yeah, they um, do. They're oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Settle down. Um, so we can hold on to it here. But as you can see with the head, that has actually two um, heads on it that are rotating around. So it seems to be able to get close to the gums. Right. So that's that's definitely handy. So this is the mother of all toothbrushes. This is the mother, and it also has the mother of all price tags. <laughs> oh, yeah. So it's one hundred and twenty dollars, okay. um, which is around it's around that price. So it's not too bad. And one neat thing about it, though, it comes with all these different parts. This is actually um, the tongue electric tongue cleaner. Uh, oh, yeah, why aren't I know. you demoing that? For you know, I was going to, but... Uh, Electric tongue cleaner, yeah. so you just, like, yeah, roll so it down your yeah, tongue? Yeah, it vibrates, and you, roll, you can roll it down your tongue, and um, so that's good as well, and it comes with all these different uh, different heads, different accessories. sizes, accessories, and those types of things. So, wow. again, this is the high end, a little more expensive, but... but you do uh, get what you pay for. If you, yeah, you do, and, you know, right. if you want a brighter smile, I'd actually recommend this. <laughs> Series 8000, it's good. Excellent. Thank you very much, Amber. Yeah. Great stuff. And now it's time for our Staff Pick segment. Today, our tech researcher, Mikey, is here with his favorite DVDs. Hmm, what will it be? <laughs> All right, we're going from cavities to comedy. We got Mikey here with his favorite DVDs. What is it? It's I'm a geek and um, self-professed, self-professed, yeah. and I love Futurama. Futurama is right. the geeks' cartoon show. It it was it's, you know it was very hardcore when it came to the geeks. Right. You know. Um, uh, it, 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 the fans of the show were very, very vocal about the show, and they, they loved it. And, and there's yeah. any millions and millions of web pages. Most people know Matt Groening from The Simpsons, but yeah. this is sort of like a, the lesser known cousin that is even more, you know, the even more passionate crowd. Exactly. All right, exactly. what's your favorite episode? Um, it's got to have Zoidberg in it. Zoidberg in the one where Bender became a human being and oh, yeah. he, he smoked and drank himself awesome. to death. And uh, the DVDs are good because they, they don't always translate that well to DVD. No, these DVDs worked fantastic. Uh, in fact, the audio commentary is is actually better than, than any of I've heard yeah. of any other TV show. And, of course, the geeks want to hear that. Exactly. You get Excellent. to hear email addresses of the writers and, and the staff and stuff, awesome. like, which is fun. Yeah. Excellent. Mikey, thank you very much. <laughs> no Great problem, stuff. Mikey. Wow, there you go, the Futurama DVD. Well, thanks, Mikey. And thank you for watching today on behalf of the Gadgets and Gizmos team. I'm Mark Saltzman telling you to take your tech and keep it real, plug it in, and power on. We'll see you next time.